Well, good evening. If you're in uh, the UK or Europe, um, or hello and good day if you're anywhere else in the world. My name is Nat Colson, and uh, I'm going to be presenting uh, a talk for you tonight on how to create great for photography portfolios. Um, this evening's uh, presentation uh, is going to cover a range of topics, starting with uh, what makes a great portfolio. Uh, we're going to talk about how to find focus with your work to make uh, your presentation the most effective that it can be. I'm going to teach you how to edit and sequence your photography for the best effect. We're going to talk about a range of presentation formats uh, from print to video and on-screen uh, displays. And then I'll do some demos uh, using some software and, and share some production tips. Um, maybe a little bit of background is in order. Um, th this topic of presenting portfolios is kind of you know, near and dear to my heart. Um, you may know that before becoming a photographer by trade, I worked as a graphic designer. And so I've always really been a big believer in uh, showcasing your work. And I found that in photography in particular, that there is a real uh, shortage of good information on how to package up your work in such a way that uh, conveys your work in its strongest, uh, in its strongest way. So the point tonight is mainly uh, to get across how to, uh, how to present your work in a range of formats. Let's talk first though about why you would even have a photography portfolio. I, I work with quite a lot of uh, students and clients, uh, both one-to-one -one and in group workshops. And what I see sort of across the board is that even if people are good at creating pictures and making strong photographs, that they don't uh, always share them. And when they do share them, it's a little bit unstructured and uh, doesn't really come across in the best way. So maybe we can look briefly at you know ways that you might use a portfolio. Um, it probably would also help to sort of frame the idea here of what is a portfolio and I'll get more into this uh, in the, the next couple of slides but what we're talking about here is a, a collection of images sort of packaged up uh, to convey a specific point. So you might use a photography portfolio to get an exhibition with a gallery or a museum. Um, you can certainly use photography portfolios as a way to open the door towards getting paying jobs uh, for clients if you're doing any kind of commercial work. Um, portfolios can be used to get your work in the press. And certainly um, in a lot of cases, if you want to pitch a magazine, or uh, get some kind of press coverage, then uh, presenting a portfolio is, is a key part of that. Portfolios also, though, can really be helpful in uh, internally, kind of for yourself, just to how to document your own creative practice and to, uh, to see your development as time goes on. That creating a portfolio also can really help you actually create new concepts, right? I mean, it's, it's pretty common that as you start on one direction, um, whether it be a portfolio or a new series of work that you're creating, that you start in one direction with a certain idea and then you find certain branching off points. And you, you'd think you, you started with a strong concept, but maybe the best idea really is yet to come. So when you start sequencing your work into discrete sets and creating little packaged portfolios of your work, then you may come up with some new ideas as well. So some goals for what makes a successful portfolio. And I'll talk also about some of the mistakes and some of the things that uh, don't go so right. Um, but to make a successful portfolio, obviously, you know, our main goal here is to share the images. But the idea of sharing your work as a photographer really has a lot of different facets and, and a lot of aspects to it that uh, maybe deserve to go a little bit deeper. 
So a portfolio, first and foremost, as you're sharing your work, really has to convey your own personal intent, right? You want to show a style and vision that is unique to you. You want people to understand right away when they look at your portfolio what it is that you have to say. Now, that could be that you have a story to tell or that uh, the collection of images has a narrative quality to it. Um, but in any case, the portfolio as a collection needs to hang together cohesively. A successful portfolio also will provide some structure to your creative process. And this is something that I've been talking a lot more about lately with my students, that some of the most creative photographers and other kinds of artists don't always um, apply much of a, a structural framework to, the, to their practice. And I've seen time and time again that the best creative results uh, will happen when you do apply a little bit of uh, a formal structure to what you're doing. And that uh, creates some parameters and some boundaries to work within. Um, it gives you guiding principles to know when you've been successful. Of course, a successful portfolio also is going to open doors for you. And th those doors very often would be for collaborations. Now, collaborations in and of itself is kind of a broad topic. Uh, I mean, we might consider a gallery exhibition, a collaboration, or, uh, you know, an interview with a journalist for a magazine is somewhat of a collaboration. But also think in terms of working with other people and getting input into your work and you know, seeing ways that your work can expand and improve. So if your portfolio is going to serve these purposes and meet these goals, then it, it needs to follow a certain structural framework and that's what we're gonna talk about next. So some basic steps to creating a portfolio. And for the rest of uh, this evening's presentation, I'm mainly going to be going over each of these sections. So you really want to start with some kind of a concept. And I think this is something that uh, very often gets skipped or uh, minimized. Not enough time is spent on, um, you know, what is the idea behind a portfolio. And I think I can kind of understand how that can be, where it, it's a common misconception that a portfolio should show the whole range of what you have done and what you can do. And if there's one point I want you to take away from this presentation, it's that opposite to that way of thinking that the strongest portfolio is going to be very, very focused and very tightly edited and produced around a certain specific concept. So some of the reasons why maybe this, this can be a little bit confusing. Um, for example, um, there are uh, trade associations such as the Royal Photographic Society, who I'm a member of and I you know, believe a lot in their programming. And they have these distinctions, uh, three different levels that you can apply for to get uh, you know, a certain type of accreditation for the, the quality and the standard of your work. Well, at the entry level of the Royal Photographic uh, Distinction process is what's called the licentiate, and it starts, it's LRPS, the so licentiate of the Royal Photographic Society. And in that stage, what they really want to see is that you have a good general knowledge of photography. And so it's very common that you would be asked to present a range of subject matter, right? Maybe they want to show that you can shoot landscapes and portraits and uh, some work in low light and some work with fast shutter speed. And you, you, know, you, you know what I mean, a, a range of styles and techniques. That's all well and good. Um, if your goal is to um, accomplish a certain level of distinction and those are the requirements, then by all means, follow the brief, all right? And that's, that's another key point to all of this is that when you're creating a portfolio, you want to be working to some type of a creative brief. And even if um, it's your own creativity that has come up with the goals, you need to have something to, to aim for. So aside from something where you're required to show a whole range of skills, 
then most of the situations for presenting a portfolio actually are quite the opposite, where you really do want to show something very, very specific. And what this means is that a, a really strong portfolio is going to be very focused on one uh, style or one subject matter or one genre. So if I was to ask you to send me a portfolio, I would not want to see 20 images that were all completely different from one another. I would want to see 20 images that were curated together that make good sense as a set, right? And so that leads us to the next step, which is image selection, where you know, you're actually choosing what images go with each other. And that's, I'm going to spend a considerable amount of time uh, looking at that. Presentation format. Now by format in this case, I'm referring to is it printed? Is it on screen? Uh, you know, what is the aspect ratio, the size and shape of the pages, all of that, right? We're, we're thinking of layout. What are the, the actual uh, images uh, look like as they're presented? After uh, your image selection process, then of course you'd be doing a lot of sequencing and by editing in this context, I'm talking about how you choose what images are going to be included and which ones you leave out. So we're going to get really deep into that in just a minute. After you have uh, gone over it and over it and you're, you're pretty confident in your selection and your sequencing, then is where you're going to be doing your final output and production. And then, of course, uh, onto presentation and delivery. So these are the, the next uh, sections that we're going to talk about. So I, I have a, just a few more text slides, and then I'm going to go into uh, Lightroom and uh, some other software that I'm going to uh, show you actually how to do each one of these steps. So let's talk first about concept and image selection. Now, I said just a minute ago that it's really important that you uh, focus a portfolio around one specific thing. And the way that I like to describe that is that there's a thread that links together all these images, right? Now, that thread could be, you know, it could be a widely defined definition or it could be something extremely focused. That's up to you and that it should reflect your creative intention, right? You could show um, a portfolio of landscapes or you could show a portfolio just of alpine and mountain landscapes. You could show a collection of portraits or you could show a collection of portraits of uh, children in certain environments, right? So you can get as specific as you want, but the point is that the collection of images in the portfolio needs to be sort of uh, curated together based on a certain concept. They also need to have the same visual style. This means that you wouldn't want to be mixing pictures that are very minimal and uh, sort of calm and tranquil against pictures that are very busy and energetic. And actually, I see this a lot when I'm reviewing work. Um, it's, it's very common to sort of bounce around from one to another type of picture. And the best portfolios, again, are going to be very, very consistent. Uh, one really major point to that is that you would almost never want to mix color and black and white or monochrome pictures in one portfolio. If you're going to put together a set of images, be it 12 or 24 or 50 images, I really believe that you're best off to make them either all color or all monochrome. And what this all means is that if you have a broader range of work to show, then you just start splitting it up into different portfolios. And I have some examples that I'll show you in just a minute. Uh, in terms of visual style, one of the other things that sort of uh, differentiates images from one another is their basic composition. Things like focal length, which would be, you know, wide angle or very tight close up shots. You really don't want to go from a really wide angle shot to a tight shot and then back and forth because it, it, it uh, loses the flow and the continuity. That's really what you're looking for in all of your image selections, is that they, they need to be uh, look like that they all sort of are sharing the same vision, but there's a, a tricky bit to that, and it's, it's really easy to make it really repetitive and monotonous. So I'm going to show you some, some trip, uh, tick, sorry, tips and tricks 
uh, for how to uh, make it things continuous but not uh, monotonous. So one of the best uh, techniques that you can use to guide your creative development for portfolios and for new series and really any kind of body of work that you're creating with your photography is to do some writing. And if you're going to put together a portfolio, just jot down a few words or a couple of sentences about what is this portfolio intended to show, right? That intention is what's going to carry the strength of the, the selection. The biggest fault that I see very consistently in portfolios, and, and you know, a portfolio in this context could be um, a book or a web gallery um, or a set of prints, but this idea that things are incongruous, right? That pictures that really don't go together, right? So again, the whole point to a strong portfolio is that the, the elements have to really fit together. Real quickly, uh, just reviewing the presentation formats, and I'm going to show you examples of each of these in just a minute. So we have web galleries, which most photographers in one form or another have web galleries. Now this could be on your own website, it could be on Flickr or SmugMug, or even a, a Facebook album could be considered a web gallery. Um, if you're on Instagram, your Instagram wall on your profile page, you know, the way that that is presented as a gallery. Whenever you're putting together a collection of images that people might see all at one time, you want to apply these portfolio curation techniques, and that definitely includes anything on the web. PDFs is a really great way to uh, distribute and share portfolios. And one of the main um, sort of inspirations I had for doing this uh, particular talk uh, is that I've just completed a whole set of PDF portfolios that I'll be sharing on my new website later this spring or summer. And I'm gonna show you some examples of PDF portfolios that you know have really kind of helped me uh, focus a little bit more on uh, what's the best way to share my work. Obviously, you know, traditionally speaking, prints uh, are where it's at for portfolios and nothing really takes the place of a well-produced and beautifully printed set uh, of images in a, a print box. And I'm going to talk about that uh, towards the end tonight. We can also think about books and magazines uh, and uh, multimedia formats like video. These are all presentation uh, formats that can be used as a portfolio. So I'm going to go uh, show you an example of each one of these. So when it comes to sequencing and editing the pictures, and don't worry, I, I, this isn't all just going to be text bullet point slides. I'm going to have uh, quite a lot of uh, demonstrations coming up in just a minute. Sequencing and editing, you're really looking for visual characteristics, right? And I'm going to explain in a demo what that exactly looks like. But the sequencing of a portfolio is a real art unto itself. I mean, even after you've made a good selection of images, the way that you string them together, you know, one after another and on to the next, really is going to create uh, the, the flow and the impact of the presentation. The orientation that you use is really important too. I see a lot of portfolios that sort of bounce randomly back and forth between portrait and landscape orientation photos. And that is really jarring and disconcerting. I would say you, you wanna really uh, try and uh, sequence your orientations of photos as tightly as you can as well. And that also goes for aspect ratio. And by this, I mean the crop factor. Um, this is another thing that I do see a lot in portfolios where one image is a square, another one is a two by three landscape orientation, another one is a really wide panoramic format, another maybe is a four by five vertical. And when you mix all those different aspect ratios together, the portfolio ends up looking really like a jumble. So what we're really aiming for is a flow where everything holds together nicely and as the, the viewer goes from one to the next uh, that it, uh, it all sort of uh, looks carefully orchestrated. So one technique, and I'll show you this in Lightroom in just a second, one way really to sequence your work to the best effect is uh, just to start working with smaller size thumbnails first before you get into your fuller size previews. Looking at thumbnails is the best way to evaluate the composition and understand what's happening with your pictures. 
So with print portfolios, and I'm going to come back around to some of this towards the end, but I, I want to just lay this out there that if you're going to be doing print for portfolios. Now, this obviously is something that you would share with somebody in person, either hand it to them yourself or, uh, you know, have it delivered by courier, etc. Print portfolios, you generally need to keep a little bit smaller and uh, fewer numbers of images than maybe you can get away with electronically. So I'm thinking sort of 18 to 24 images in a, in a good print portfolio, and you really, really have to use a standardized size. Over the years, I've come to favor the 16 by 20 inch uh, outer sort of uh, sheet size, if you will, and that uh, fits into a box. Right, so you can buy these really nice uh, presentation boxes like in a clamshell or with a removable lid um, that um, fit a standard size print. Now, your prints in a portfolio can either be uh, loose prints as long as they're protected somehow, maybe in a, an acetate sleeve, or they can be mounted. I've seen some really, really beautiful uh, portfolios uh, presented to me. And generally when I send off a, a set of prints, I do mount them um, so that they are a little bit more durable and easy to handle in the box. So let's look at some examples here. I'm gonna hide out of my slideshow here. And to start, I think we will just jump into Lightroom, okay? So what I have here is a collection of images and actually I've set aside a uh, a group of collections that I'm going to go through each of these uh, for different purposes. So I, I guess I should point out that if you don't use Lightroom, that's nothing really to worry too much about. You can do these techniques using any kind of software. And for that matter, even if you're, you know, working with slides or original prints, right, some of these editing techniques are universal regardless of your software. Now Lightroom does have a, a few certain advantages, especially when it comes to outputting in different formats, which I'll talk about in a second. But don't get too hung up on the software aspect, right? We're really concentrating on techniques for editing. Also, when I'm talking about editing in this context, I'm really encouraging you to think like a photo editor. Right? If you work for a magazine or a newspaper, then your job is to sort through a whole bunch of pictures and decide which ones go together. So maybe to start, I'll pull up these couple of collections of images. So what I've got here is, this is what I would consider a portfolio. Now, the sequencing is a little bit awkward because we've got two horizontals, one vertical, two horizontals, one vertical then all the rest are in the landscape orientation, right? So maybe there is some improvement that could be done maybe by sequencing something like this, where we go several horizontals, uh, trying to unify the color palette as well. You notice how I've got these warm color tones all grouped together. Then we switch to a vertical or a portrait orientation, which gives us sort of a segue to transition to another image that's maybe quite a lot different in, uh, in its uh, color palette and its overall feeling, right? So you wanna use these little segues as turning points of how you can flip to a different type of image. So we've got a, a vertical of a, a waterfall, but then we go to something that's very serene, right? And very calm and cool, right? So we're kind of, flowing the feeling as we go through here. Okay, so this, this is a portfolio set that I've uh, printed as a small set that's um, uh, sold in a little box of very sort of personal sized um, little prints. Here's another set. Now the, the key difference between these two, if I just jump back to this one real quick, this is all pretty much natural landscapes, right? There's not a lot of human element in here. Maybe on this one, there's a little house. This one's got a lighthouse. But for the most part, these are all very natural sort of wilderness landscapes. I've made a whole separate portfolio that also are landscapes. But if you look at these, they have a lot more influence from the hand of man. So I would prefer to not mix 
a, a wilderness landscape portfolio with images that are showing a lot of you know human development you know something like this is less about the landscape and more about what humans have done to it right so that's a, a good example of dividing up your subject matter and trying to think of different ways to group pictures together uh, in ways that really make the most sense. Now with these two portfolio collections, you see I've got 16 and 15 images res uh, uh, respectfully, and that is um, a good number for a small set of prints, especially if it's something that's gonna, intended to be very portable. So an example sort of on the other end uh, of what doesn't work I came across this collection in my Lightroom catalog called Portfolio 2008. Now, thinking back, I would imagine that my idea here was to collect a whole bunch of images that would then go into a portfolio. Because if you look at this collection of images, you know, I've got a minimal landscape, I've got three abstracts, I've got some close-ups and some really wide angle shots. I've got, you know, a, an overhead view from a hot air balloon, right? I mean, I think you would agree that for example, like this image and let's say this image don't at all go together, okay? Now they do have some common elements, coincidentally. That was just a very random selection. They've got the red and the blue kind of working, but I would never put these images together into the same portfolio. So what would I do instead? Well, if I start with a collection like this, which most photographers are going to have, right? Their favorites or their, their best of kind of collection, right? Your next job is to start separating these out into what really makes logical sets. And so to do this, I'm gonna make a new collection and I'll just call it, um, uh, how about intimate landscapes? Okay, I'm going to create that in there. I'll make that as a target collection. So my concept here, and I kind of, you know, skirted over that, but what I've already done is defined what is the idea behind this uh, portfolio going to be. And so by calling it intimate landscapes, I'm creating a little bit of a creative brief for myself. What, what does intimate mean? Well, first it's gotta be close up, right? This one maybe is close enough to be a close up. I'll call that intimate. Um, this one, that's probably intimate, right? This one is intimate. Uh, now I've called it intimate landscapes. So would I use this bird? Not at all. Right, that would be for a different portfolio because it is certainly not an intimate landscape. Right, but this one may be, and I'll just go through here quickly. Now, I'm already thinking also that this is not a collection that's going to show sort of the hand of man, right? This is natural landscapes. And so I'm going to be picking images that I feel like convey the idea of intimacy, right? We're up close and personal with uh, with nature. Now I'm going to put this one in there and show you why that's a mistake. Put a few black and whites in there. Intimate, intimate. All right, really I'm do just doing this pretty quick. Okay, and so I started with this big collection of 154 pictures and what I want is a, a tightly edited collection that shows intimate landscapes, right? So I've put those all in here now. So I have 20 images and these all fit the criteria of intimate landscape, certainly. But look, I've mixed monochrome and color. This one is a tinted monochrome with a little subtle green tint to it. So if I go through these pictures just quickly here, look how it just jumps around and just doesn't make any kind of logical sense at all, right? So that's what we're trying to avoid. But this is really a fine starting point. From here then, I would start thinking about, okay, which images definitely can come out? Well, this is gonna be a color portfolio. I've decided that already. So all the monochrome and black and whites can come out. 
right away, you can see that it's gotten a lot tighter in its conceptual visualization here, right? Now, this one is very much more of a wide angle scenic landscape, right? Where this one maybe is medium angle. So the question is, can those coexist? So to determine that, maybe we look at some of the other pictures, right? I mean, would this one and this one go together? I would say they do not go together, partly because of the mood and the feeling and you know, the, just the basic graphics, right? So I'm thinking maybe this landscape's gone, okay? This landscape's gone now, right? So very quickly, I've started with one concept of intimate landscapes or intimate nature, and right away, it's not landscapes anymore, is it? So maybe I would rename it intimate nature. Okay, and now I have a cohesive set of images that for the most part kind of all go together, right? They go together conceptually, they go together stylistically, they go together visually. And so the next thing to do is to develop some kind of sequencing. So in terms of sequencing, you always want to lead with something strong that conveys the main point of your, uh, your concept. So maybe I would lead with this one, okay? Because that to me feels pretty intimate. It is nature. It's also pretty minimal, but it is color, right? And so that's established that we're starting mainly with uh, verticals. So I think to carry that further then, I want to sequence some of these other images in such a way that starts to create a little bit of a flow. Okay, do you see, you see the top row here? We go from mostly greens with a little orange to a little bit of the brown bark with a little spot of red, a little bit less color in this one, back to a little bit more. Maybe that can go over here. Maybe that can go there. Okay, and then, so I've, I've done that all with thumbnails and then I'll just cycle through them with the larger size preview to see, is this working? Because what you really want is to make sure that they go forward and back, right? So that one image leads to the next. Okay, I'm gonna leave this collection alone. I think that gives you enough of a basis on the overall process. Let's look at a couple of others here. I've got this one called Nat's All-Time Favorites. Now, I've only just started this collection recently, and what I had in mind here is that this is, you know, my favorite abstract pictures, and obviously these are all quite abstract. But I can tell you right away, and I'm sure you would agree immediately as well, that this is not one portfolio. And so I would never present this all together, even though it's my all-time favorites. But you know, this picture and this picture, for example, those do not go together. They will never live together in a portfolio. Well, so what do I do? I start splitting up separate portfolios. And to do that then, I'll go to a different set. And so here's what I've just finished recently, putting together some portfolios that really are intended to be much more tightly edited. So for example, here is, well, here's a, a, an uh, ARPS. This is for the Royal Photographic Distinctions. This is a set uh, called Urban Geometry, right? So you can see that those all are cohesive. They're all monochrome. This isn't actually the, the correct sequencing, right? I would move them around in a different order. I think I start with that one. Okay, but you wanna have one sort of build to the next, right? So you have kind of some visual flow and continuity. Okay, so there's there's a portfolio that I think works as a set of images. Uh, what else do we have here? I've got an, a black and white abstracts. Okay, now this this collection has 56 images in it, but it's only intended to be presented as uh, electronic, right? This isn't going to be a print portfolio. So I've allowed you know, quite a few more pictures in it than what I normally would if it was just for print. So we start with this, 
and you see how it sort of flows from one end to the next. But I'm not making too much of a huge departure with any individual image, right? Think of it like, you know, a piece of music, how it sort of goes from one section to the next. So to give you a better idea of what I've done with those now, um, so I've created all of these separate portfolios and I've used the Lightroom book module to lay out very simple portfolio sets. Okay, so each page has one image. Most portfolios work best when they're like that. I'll give you some uh, exceptions in just a second, but most portfolios are just gonna have one image per page. Now, if you're on a web gallery, you want to be you know, sequencing it so that the viewer can see just one image at a time. But you can see how these have all been sequenced. You know, these are a lot more busy. These have got patterns and textures that kind of flow from one end to the next. So then from the Lightroom uh, book uh, module, I've exported a bunch of these PDF portfolios. Okay, so here's that one saved out. Now I, I started off with a uh, statement of intent explaining what is this portfolio? What's my purpose behind it? And then on this uh, style of portfolio, I've used a dark gray background because it's gonna be mainly viewed on screen. I think dark backgrounds are best on screen. I've put a title with each one. I've also numbered the pages, mainly just for reference. Okay, but that's, that's a black and white abstract portfolio. I've got a whole bunch of other portfolios. I've got one for architecture. Okay, so this one is only architecture uh, buildings and architectural elements, and details, right? There's no abstractions really in here. Okay, so I've got all these black and white abstract architecture, landscape, nature, and so forth. And then I've done a whole bunch of separate color portfolios. Okay, and so these are designed then to work together just as a set of images. Now these also, in addition to having been exported as PDFs, this is what I use uh, on my website. So if I go to the web galleries, Here's how I've presented these portfolios. So you can see how they all kind of break down. So here's one that's nature, which is different than landscape. To me, landscape is wide angle, big vistas. Whereas this nature portfolio, which loads the PDF, it is close up, more intimate nature. But you see they're all sequenced very carefully to go one to the next to the next. So a couple of other good examples of that. Um, I have a, a good friend and a client named Ron Cooper who does very different work than I do. Um, he does portrait, portrait work, uh, both color and monochrome, uh, and both in the studio and uh, sort of in envir environmental portraiture out and about in the world. So a few years ago, Ron and I produced an exhibition, and I think this is a good example of how a portfolio can grow uh, to beyond just a set of images and turn into something that has a lot more of a, you know, a meaning and a richer purpose and certainly will have a lot more utility and usefulness. So this is uh, Ron's Keepers of Tradition series, uh, which is Native Americans uh, in their traditional regalia. This is a set of black and white portraits right, all done in the studio. So they're all the same subject matter, the same style, the same genre, same visual presentation. So they hold together really well. And this actually is a catalog that we produced uh, building on the portfolio to include uh, some quotes and some little before and after explanations, a little bit of an introductory statement by Ron and then we get into the images where this is very much a portfolio format, right? Where we are including a little bit of additional information along with the photos, but really a single picture is the only thing on each page. And again, they're sequenced in such a way 
that one is designed to flow to the next. And what you want to avoid really is anything that's too jarring. Unless, of course, you're doing that for specific impact. You know, if that's your purpose and your point is to get somebody's attention, then you would insert an image that's dramatically different just to wake them up a little bit, right? Okay, so that is a portfolio that's been extended out, you know, to become something a little bit more. Um, Ron also has recently been uh, producing a set of um, studio portraits of drag queens. And uh, you're seeing this for the first time. Uh, Ron and I are just actually finishing this up as we speak. Uh, and this will be available for uh, download and purchase on Blurb as a magazine. So this started as a portfolio and a series, right? I mean, all of this is about producing a body of work uh, and then was put together um, into a magazine format. So essentially what we've done is taken the portfolio set of images and then added some copy and done a magazine style layout where it's a portfolio and then some, right? So as you're creating your portfolios, if your concept is tight enough, if the creative direction behind the work is sound, then you'd be amazed at how a portfolio can lead to, you know, full-fledged projects, you know, including long-form books, right? And so this, again, was all laid out in uh, Lightroom, uh, and then uh, it'll be uploaded into Blurb. Okay, so that, that's a portfolio that's been sort of transformed into a magazine. Couple other examples. So maybe let's switch gears real quick to video. Um, I'll play a, a short section of this video first. Uh, let's see this one, I think. Okay, so here is uh, a video that I made uh, just of my abstract photography. Now, the sequencing is not as strong as it could be. Um, it mainly was meant to show a range of work and a, a series of implementations where, you know, I produce an abstract work and then print it on canvas, mount it, frame it as art. Okay, so the purpose of this portfolio is a little bit different than some of the other ones that we've looked at. Okay, so this video, the runtime on this is about five minutes, so I don't have time to go through the whole thing, but if I just sort of skip ahead, you can see that it really is a broad cross section of you know, a lot of abstract images sequenced one after another. But I put this in a video format. Let me just show you real quick how I did that. In, the, in Lightroom, there is a slideshow module that you can export as video. So quite literally, all I did was created a Lightroom collection and then sequenced all the images together, somewhat roughly, I might admit. And then once I got them in the order I wanted, I added some music. You can actually add uh, an audio clip as a soundtrack right in Lightroom and then export as video. Okay, so that's a way to very quickly take, a, uh, using Lightroom anyway, to take a, uh, a collection of images that you've made as a portfolio and uh, output it uh, to another format. Okay, so switching gears here again, if we want to look maybe a little bit more at web portfolios. So these again are my uh, PDFs uh, in different categories. Uh, those also are presented on uh, one of my other websites. It's really, this is my archive of kind of everything that I've done. Uh, but these are presented literally just as web galleries but they've been selected, curated, and sequenced, you know, using the same techniques that I've explained to make sure that it holds together. Let's get back in here. Okay, so we're about ready to wrap it up. Um, 
we don't have time tonight for uh, Q&A, but you can always reach out to me directly. Um, I'm always happy to answer uh, questions and look at your work quickly by email, and I'll, I'll always uh, help with uh, constructive critique however I can. I do want to offer to everyone who's uh, watching tonight and who uh, will be viewing this recorded video um, that I, I do portfolio reviews. And so what we can do is connect over the internet and uh, look at your images and go through them and make a plan. Uh, I can help you do the image editing and the sequencing and get it all packaged up nicely. and. Uh, for the time being, I'm offering a 50% discount off the normal price of 100 pounds for that. So that's going to do it for tonight. I hope that uh, you've picked up a few new techniques. Uh, do get in touch with me anytime with any questions. Um, I hope you're all safe and uh, staying well in this uh, uh, pandemic situation. I do wish you all the best and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much.